Hi, gardeners. Welcome to a new garden interview. I'm here today with Anastasia from the U.S. On your Linktree profile, uh, you define yourself as a multimedia human. Could you elaborate on that? Yes. Um, well, I do a lot of different mediums, um, ceramics, photography, paper making, done performance art. Um, I create a direct all my own videos and obviously a musician as well. So um, multimedia human in the sense that they just exist within multiple mediums and yeah. have multiple identities through those mediums. Yeah, nice. And I presume, yeah, that comes from uh, your upbringing because you come from a family of artists. Both of your parents are fashion designers. Mm -hmm. And also, I read that it was your uncle that influenced you a lot to pursue a career uh, in music. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a direct influence in terms of um, here, do music, but it was cool to grow up seeing him um, tour and have his success and um, I guess I was the first time I was properly introduced to the concept of doing music as a career, uh, as a way to make a living. Up till then, uh, in my family at least, it was very much seen as a hobby or something that you just appreciated from a distance, even mm -hmm. though my parents are artists. It wasn't particularly a like musical home, you know, so... Yeah. That was my first foray or inspiration into learning music for myself. Music. Yeah. At what age do you remember remember writing your first song? Mm, 14, 14 or 15. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, is it any songs that, from when you started listening, are any of these songs already out, uh, released or not really? It's just like first projects that... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 14 years old is a while ago <laughs> yeah. uh, for me. I don't know whatever happened to those songs. I don't even think I could remember them. I think I posted them on YouTube back way back then, and I must have pulled them down at some point. But um, they're definitely not out in the world <laughs> and lost to time and memory. Yeah. 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 What are you most thankful for in your upbringing within that whole um, artist's uh, background? Uh, I'm thankful for parents who took artistry very seriously and gave me um, a very good definition or boundary for what an artist is and isn't and that they were so un uncompromising in how much work it takes to be an artist. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful that I get, got to grow up knowing that um, to be an artist is a choice, like an act of choice that you have to make. Yeah. That <laughs> um, being an artist is an act of choice you have to make, and that up until that point, it doesn't really matter what anybody else says. And like once you decide to be an artist, okay, you're an artist. But yeah, my parents were like, "This is what that means." Okay, so it was good to have that. Like yeah. rule in place. Yeah, nice. Because I also saw another interview uh, where you mentioned that your parents, although they are artists at some points in your life, uh, when you were younger, they would rather you pursue something else, such as yeah, being a lawyer or a doctor, because mm -hmm. uh, you had a like, few struggles growing up yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, at which point in your life was it that you were like, no, it's really music is what I want to do. And there's nothing you can say about it. <laughs> well, music, I didn't choose music. Music chose me um, very much so. It wasn't like I had ambition for music when I first started. It was kind of just something that I dabbled in and enjoyed doing. And I had a passion for it, but it I never saw it as like very serious. Yeah. Um, it was outside forces that were like, okay, you have talent, you have these things. Let's put you in these rooms with these people and make a career out of it. So I was very much pushed into my music as a career. I don't think I chose music as a career for myself till about 23 years old, I'm okay. 28 now. Yeah. Um, up until then, I was really just being dragged along by other people's opinions. Yeah. But in terms of being an artist, I always knew I wanted to be an artist, like from kindergarten. Um, 
I remember bringing home paintings to my dad and he would pay me a dollar for the ones that were good. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got addicted to that validation very young. <laughs> um, but of course the whole time uh, watching my parents do their art and put their passion into what they were creating right after like their shows they'd be like remember you're going to be a doctor or a lawyer you don't want to do this it's just, like <laughs> so unstable and hard especially in America there's no support for the arts so you're really on your own and you don't have health care, you don't have child care, you don't have anything. So yeah. if you don't make it, you're like, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. to be an artist is a very brave choice. And um, I knew that even if it wasn't music, that I would be spending my life creating and that getting a real job, quote unquote, was just going to be how I made money. And then in my free time, I would always be creating. Yeah. Nice. Um, and what were your biggest music influences when you really started focusing on music? Um, I think the music that most caught my eye was, or ear, was Bill Withers, Nina Simone, um, Curtis Mayfield, Otis Redding. That was like the first batch of musicians that I really dove into and explored their catalog and became very much obsessed with their songwriting um, and because those were my entry point I think my most of my training was in songwriting itself and not so much songwriting and tone um, less so like any I guess any other influence that I could have but yeah those are my yeah first when you say songwriting and tone you mean like the tone of your mm -hmm. voice yeah you have quite a very versatile tone where you sing very um low notes and high notes mm -hmm. do you have any preference no it's all no. um it's all a colors in a palette yeah um, you just you're painting an image with your voice and um with sound so i just use my voice to offer different shades and hues yeah wow. that's pretty beautiful the way you put it <laughs> Um, and I'm curious about your label, Sacred Bowl Records. Mm -hmm. Is it your own? Because I tried to find information on it and I couldn't find anything. <laughs> yeah, um, it is my own label. Um, it was kind of a necessity. Just basically I was looking for a label to support my EP. Did not find one. Um, more so didn't find a deal that was fair. Yeah. Um, that I would be happy signing. So I decided to form an LLC and just do it myself yeah um so that's why there's no info on it because I didn't really like launch it as a label there's no other artists on the label yeah it's just me um and it's self-named after my first EP Sacred Bull um so Sacred Bull Records yeah and would you want to then stay independent in the future or maybe you might consider signing a bigger deal yeah I'm, I'm considering it um it's just about need like when and where I need support. Yeah. Um, being an independent artist is very difficult. You know, you have to make sacrifices and choices yeah. that are mostly based on income and um, energy because you're often the only person doing everything. Yeah. At least in my case, I've, I've been that. And just now I'm building my team and um, burnout is very real. So trying to... I think I'm at a phase in my career where in order to get to the quote unquote next level of where I want to be I need support I need a team yeah. otherwise you know yeah. you just yeah. have to lay down yeah some sometimes point. you know it's oh, it's alright to ask for help yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but maybe would you consider using this label to then as well help other um, independent artists um, that's an interesting question I think the structure of labels is inherently exploitative um, so even artists that start labels, the structure that you would need to have for your contract, for your deal, in order for you to sustain a business would be not beneficial to the artist okay. for me. So if I were to help another artist, I would need to take, you know, at least 50% yeah. of what they make, um, just to pay for my overhead. But like that is not, I don't think that that's fair. Yeah. Um, and so there needs to be, and this is just because of the structure of the music industry as a whole. It's a very systemically flawed system. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are other ways to help artists, mainly like 
grants, open-ended grants, like literally just giving them money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> With no strings attached, um, like providing platforms for them to perform. So I see myself helping with those things as my profile grows, but I'm not really interested in running a label. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there a particular artist that you would really like to collaborate with? Um, Who's on your radar? Yeah. Who's my radar? I mean, <laughs> she's, am I on her radar? Um, <laughs> I, my biggest dream, I think, is to record with Bjork um, yeah. before she retires. And Labi Sifra as well, who he's still alive, he's in his 70s. Um, who else? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, to be honest, not very plugged into like, the music that's happening within my, my age group and my peer group because mm -hmm. um, I often look to older music. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, there's not, like, any anybody that's around, I and mean, maybe this is, sounds, like, cocky, but anybody that's, like, our age or around, it's, like, three de degrees of separation. So it would more be, like, two peers collaborating, whereas, like, if I was to work with Bjork or if I was to work with, like, Joni Mitchell or... Lobby C for I'd be like, oh my god, yeah, <laughs> like, I'd be, like losing my mind. Um, but anybody besides that, I'd be like, oh, hey, bro, like, yeah, so, <laughs> like, it wouldn't be that, you know. Yeah, exciting. it's not as special as yeah, yeah looking yeah. up to these artists. Yeah, these like yeah. legacy artists that are just yeah. beyond time. Yeah. Well, then, with that in mind, if you could open up a show for any artists, mm -hmm. who would it be, and which dream venue? Mm. Enough for any artist, who would it be? These these are not how my dreams are structured. Yeah. No, that's I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I've you, not thought about that. Yeah, really. that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> what about a dream venue? Maybe is there like dream a venue. yeah a particular I'm, venue you've seen mm, that you would like to perform at? Um, I love performances in churches. I think my dream show would be uh, BBC Proms show with the okay. orchestra yeah nice. um that would be really cool and a really cool venue and like yeah organization of the music would be really amazing i think okay yeah and what is your creative process like how do you find inspiration for your songs and how do you yeah set up and start writing mm -hmm. um i have a pretty roundabout songwriting process i don't unless I'm going into a writing session for somebody else or to meet new people, um, I don't usually write on the spot. I will just live my life and songs come to me. Yeah. Um, so I paint a lot. I do ceramics. I, I saw a quote, a video interview of Joni Mitchell actually talking about the same thing where she's like, I, I, uh, rotate the crops. And so that's kind of what I do. It's like, you can't always just be in the head of songwriting. Yeah. You have to be in life, and then songwriting is just a part of life because you're just translating life into music. Yeah. Um, but my actual process is finding interesting tunings and or interesting progressions on the guitar first. Um, when I lock something in, usually next words just come to my brain because I'm seeing images and I'm, the sounds are eliciting memories and I just start picking from those memories and trying to form stories and then as a little bit of the story comes out then you can kind of just start pulling the thread and the whole sweater unravels and it becomes like some sort of story or lesson or um, just gift from the universe and um, that's why I often just say I channel because once you get to that point where you're just pulling the thread, it's just about staying focused and yep. getting the whole thing out um, all at once. And I don't write songs like over days. It just, I'll sit down for like eight hours sometimes and just loop the same thing just to get it all yep. there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And what sort of stories do you like telling? I like to try to tell the most universal stories. Um, like very human, human interest stories, as in like what is the least common denominator between all of us, okay. least common denominator of experience and 
feeling. Um, those are usually the most mundane but profound things to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and try and use my experience and my how I felt those similar things to then expound on what everybody else has maybe felt about those things and okay. try and find a middle ground. Yeah, nice. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> what is your favorite to produce song out of everything that you've released so far? Which one is the that you're most proud of mm. and why? Um, I suppose I'm most proud of evergreen um yeah because evergreen has like five different versions of it um i wrote it a long time ago like 2017 maybe and um the first version that i wrote like had a bunch of different verses and the chord progression was different and then um, I played it for a producer, I got changed again, didn't like it, changed, played it for another producer, another version, didn't like it. I think it went through like five different producers, didn't like any of them. And yeah. then this version, um, I produced myself. And the way that I did it was I, you know, brought together a band of people that I trust and I taught them a song and then we all just worked on the song together in that room um, and composed the finished version together. And so it felt like the process was a lot more collaborative and um, I was like fully involved in all aspects of it coming together and like even the strings at the end, like I wrote the head string line, which I'd never done before. Okay. And um, my friend helped translate that to strings, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, it just all came together in such a beautiful way to sound so like large and it also gives a good like overview of my my musical capacity at least at that point um because I get very soft and then I get very loud at the end and there's a time change time signature change and like it's jazzy and it's interesting and it's weird but it's also classic mm -hmm. and we I think we danced a really fine line between the two on that song um which the other ones while they're very very beautiful they don't necessarily attempt as much yeah and do you produce all of your songs then or um yeah I guess I I do in a sense I write all of my songs and because of that I go into the studio in terms of an album process with the songs already written yeah um and finished and so then I will work with musicians of different instruments to then um advance the compositions or the arrangements and I can engineer if I need to um, oftentimes though I prefer vintage gear so I prefer to have a professional en engineer but in terms of like the idea of production it's kind of gotten muddy now because now producers do so much like yeah. they do everything in the computer and my process is like almost zero computer the computer is just used to record the music yeah so in terms of a producer I'm more like a producer of, like, uh, Motown era would be considered producer. And then I have a composer and I have an arranger and we work together. And, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you always work with the same composer and arranger for all of your songs or it always changes? It changes, and yeah. Okay, nice. So sounds like you have a nice little team yeah. behind. Yeah. <laughs> what are your future projects looking like? Is there any new releases, maybe an album that we can expect? Yeah, um... I'm working on an album right now called Tether, and um, we're about a quarter of the way through. The way that timelines work in music industry, though, it's uh, I probably won't be out till 2025, mm -hmm. so I'm not quite promoting it yet. Yeah, of <laughs> um, course, yeah. But yeah, we're I don't know about new releases till then. I might keep my cards closed till yeah. the end of next year and focus on making the music, taking some time off um touring so much and yeah just going back into my hovel yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice um before i pass uh, to the fast-paced questions um it's a difficult question but i always enjoy asking that if you could give us one word to describe yourself what would it be Mm. 
evolving. Evolving. Nice. I like that. <laughs> All right. Now to the fast paced questions. Your favorite season? Spring. Sweet or salt? Salt. Cats or dogs? Dogs. City or countryside? Countryside. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Acoustic or electric guitar? Acoustic. Songwriting or composing? Songwriting. And finally, recording or performing? Performing. Performing. Okay. Well, that's everything that I have for you today. Thank you very much for this interview. Yeah, thank you. It's thank you, pleasure. everyone, for watching. This was Anastasia. And if you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our new videos. And see you with the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>